today's video is sponsored by Vi Air, Air System. Would you like to do the honors and show us what all it came? Looks like a four, three or four gallon tank. Mm -hmm. Pull this bad boy out. 2.5 gallon, two and a half gallon. That's right, she's long and skinny. Yee. Yeah. So we got the two and a half gallon Vi Air, Air tank, 480C. 480C compressor. You got a little blow up gun with a, well, that's a nice gauge on it too. Mm -hmm. Nice and For big. The blind folk. <laughs> For the blind folk. Um, air hose. Oh, we're going to need that for Daytona. Make some money off that. Heck yeah. Quarter inch airline. Pressure switch. Perfect. Half inch airline. Some wire. Air fittings. Air filter. Like air intake filter. Some more fittings, air tank fittings. Ooh, what's in the box? Ooh. Oh, All that's right. right. The air. Um, this is to go into the cab, so you can see what your air pressure is. But it's up to you. You can take this off the mount and just mount it to the tank. Yeah, to well, see what your I pressure think we'll is. probably just mount it to the tank. And you'll run the power switch to ignition switch. Okay. Well, there's stand, oh, stand boy. Is that truck big enough? I think so, but he's going bigger. Still needs quadros. Quadros, for sure. And some instructions. Instructions? Yeah, your truck's so freaking tall. Most trucks would avoid that. Man. Oh, yours hits it? So I've always wanted like some sort of onboard air system for, I guess, if I get a flat or whatever. But the main reason why we got this is so we can have train horns. Right. <laughs> which I'm getting Alex's old set of horns, which what are they? They're the it's the Shocker S6. Shocker X6? Alright. It's just the S4 kit or the Shocker kit with the two extra bells. Nice, nice. Yeah, to me I felt like this route was cheaper and better just because you get you have everything you need with Vier's onboard air system and you can just go out and buy the horns, whether it be on ebay or you can buy horn blaster ones or you can buy vixen what who vixen vixen yeah vixen makes some stuff too they're pretty decent and then there's what train horns of texas or whatever I don't know. there's like so many dif different train horn companies that you can buy just the horns from yeah i don't really like klein though their pitch is a little bit too high for me so a lot of the time when you run into high pitch or yeah. like the wrong the off sound yeah water off sound is usually an indicator of two things which is water in there mm-hmm because you gotta remember, so your, your train horn is just a diaphragm inside yeah. of the bell with gaskets on either side. And as air passes through, it's distributed across that diaphragm and it flexes it back and forth. And that sound that comes out of the bell is that rapid movement. Mm -hmm. So the second thing that can cause that is high pressure. Uh. So studies have been done on train horns that people think like the more pressure you run, the louder they get, which is absolutely not true. They actually get quieter and the tone completely changes. Mm. You get a really high pitched sound out of it by running 200 PSI like the sweet spot is always in the high 140s to the low like 160s and you'll get like the what you're looking for that authentic sound yeah. as opposed to like a higher pitch sound i've seen so many people do that and run 200 psi setups i'm running at one 180. 180 180 yeah but you're still about all the way out 180 is max yeah 180 is like max mm -hmm. absolute max but um i've seen people get kits and right out the bat the pressure Change switch the pressure is 200 switch. and so they're running 200 205 in the tank they dump the horns and they're like, it doesn't sound A couple right. weeks later, we are going to be installing the horn blasters along with Vi Air onboard air system. First things first, I got to remove the spare tire because that's where we are going to be mounting the train horns. Also, with the 38s I'm getting, that, spot, that spare tire is going to be pretty much useless. So, let's go ahead and do that. I got this key fob, so I got to remove that skin. And for everybody asking, I got it from Amazon. I just searched GMC Sierra key fob case.
Alex is still working on the horn blasters. Because when it comes to doing air, air stuff, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm going to need Alex's help a lot with the horn blasters kit. And look who showed up. Ricky. So when he showed up, we were in Alex's truck. And it kind of freaked us out because we were like, what the heck is that? Because yeah. <laughs> we were in Alex's truck and we thought we saw Alex's truck when we pulled up. Because these are kind of similar if you like look at it. And I'm, I'm just going to say it now. Denali's are overrated. Denali's are way <laughs> overrated. Yeah, it, it, all terrains are worth Yeah, it's the AT4 and, and the all terrains. All terrain, all terrain, the AT4. So Ricky recently just got these headlights done by obviously Phil at Fast Headlights. And he did a really good job. What all did you get done? Color match? Yeah, color match. Uh, got the switchbacks on them. Got the little decker lens changed out. And little GMC logo put on the cheese delete. So how is the new projector compared to your old ones? Man, it's a lot brighter. Man. You can actually see at night, huh? Uh, I, now I can piss everybody off. Cause, uh, <laughs> on my low beams, everybody's always flashing their, their lights at me. That, if, that probably means you probably need to adjust your headlights. <laughs> but you can probably see a lot better now, right? Yeah. But the factory ones are garbage. Because I know Phil showed me one time, if you look at the factory projectors, you can see like the little grooves kind of look like golf balls. But these are like completely clear. These are the more, the what? Marbles. So these are the Morimoto ones. I think Morimoto's. Yeah, they're Morimoto's. Then painted everything white. And let's show everybody the switchback. I like that a lot. Is the white brighter than before? Oh uh, yeah. It is? Brighter also. I don't know if turn on, but. Oh, she's sick. We gotta do the mirrors next. Yeah. And the cab lights. Yeah, mirrors and the cab lights. I like that. So for those of you guys that are wondering, it's a 2016 all-terrain. It's got the seven to nine inch Pugoy's lift, 24 by 14 hostile. I don't know the name of the wheels. Do you know the name? The wheels? Yeah. The wheels or the tires? The wheels. Oh, no, no. It's a hostile. Leave a comment below if you know exactly what that what that is. I forget. Because it's an old wheel. Yeah. Old wheel. <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah, I forgot. Outdated. It's, it's outdated. outdated. Soon to be updated? Yeah, soon to be updated. With some forces? Uh, I don't know. With some forged wheels? Yeah, they're going to be forged. 26 wide. Polished? 15s. And then he's got some RBP 37 inch tires. Still rocking the old yeah. steps. Come on, dude. Just get you some amp steps. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of work to be done still. And Bigger then. Lift. The what? Bigger lift. Bigger lift. 10 inch? 10 to 12? 12. So his goal right now is a 12 inch McGoy's or Cognito? Uh, I want to do Cognito. Ah, all right. <laughs> this interview's over. <laughs> no, but he wants to do Cognito. I don't know why, because I think McGoy's cross member looks way better. It's I mean it's I, I, it's not a final yet, but I mean I wanna I wanna go Cognito, but leave a comment below if you guys think he should go with McGoy's or Cognito. Let's find out what you guys prefer. I prefer McGoy's, but Cognito both, makes really good. good but both. Cognito does make a really good lift kit too. I can't, I can't say anything bad about McGoy's though. Same. So <clears throat> one thing I like about Cognito is like if uh, if people know about lift kits and you pull up with a big old truck and you see that little X under the truck, yeah. people know that he spent good money yeah, on the Cognito. Or, or yeah, or Bulletproof. But we're in the East Coast. Not too many people use Bulletproof around here. Because right. Bulletproof is like California. We got the McGoy's upper control arms. But these are like, this is an OG. Like, who had, the original owner had it since like 2016. Yeah. Like, all that setup is OG. It's been on there for a long time, but mm -hmm. it's still doing good. His Instagram handle right here, 66 Perez. Some dog poop right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you got no tires sticking outside. Let me see your interior. Oh, it's dirty. <laughs> Ah, oh, so your seat's just like 
Alex's because they're both AT4. Dude, these these seats are way more comfortable than the SLTs. Really? Mm-hmm. And the Denali's. It's got more padding. Yeah. Yeah, I felt that when uh, I drove my sister's Denali. Right. And I think that's also why they don't offer cooled seats in these because you don't see it's not ventilated. Yeah. So you sacrifice the more comfortable seats for cooled seats. But uh, what the heck is this? Ejecto Cito? Ejecto Cito, cuz! <laughs> That's a nice one. What is it though? That's from a rock lights. <laughs> your rock light switch <laughs> bro that's your rock light switch you got a freaking ejecto seat at your rock light switch <laughs> so ricky's driving he goes ejecto seat to rock lights <laughs> yeah. dude this is it's, it's, it's very makeshift bro i gotta i gotta get it fixed. i think hey, no, no you put me out of <laughs> we gotta see who's taller i think you're taller yeah, but can you believe this is a 10 inch lift i didn't i didn't I mean, I, I forgot that, you know, 1500 is sitting yeah. lower, that's why. I think we should get yours all paint matched now. Yeah, but I do like a little bit of chrome. That's why, That's why you know, when I got the GMC uh, logo put on the on the headlight, mm -hmm. I got that chrome to kind of match the rest of it. You got polished wheels and everything, so. Yeah, yeah that's Alex's truck. It's a 10-inch lift with 36s, and that. Your truck's probably, what, 8-inch lift now? Like, it's set at 8? It's like 8 and a half. Something like that. Like I said in my other video, that was my dream truck when that first came to Augusta. Dude, everybody was talking about that truck when that first came here. Yeah, I mean, it's starting, it's starting to get, it's starting to look a little less than what it used to look like. Less recognizable. Yeah, that's, that's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. Everyone's gonna be like, hey, isn't that that one truck? <laughs> no, but I remember. Yeah, that guy's truck? I'm like, no, it's my truck. <laughs> <laughs> Back in 2016 or 17, when these trucks like first came out, uh, this truck came to our town and it was for sale and dude, everybody was like talking about it when McGoy's pretty much first kind of got started out and I had McGoy's lift on my truck so I obviously had to go check this one out this was that was back when nine, when nine inch lifts were like yeah huge that's that's back when 37s were huge yeah 35s were huge now it's just like nine inch lift is like your six inch lift now that's your entry level yep <laughs> <laughs> if you got a six inch lift it's a it's a leveling kit <laughs> right if you got a leveling kit it's like what are you doing <laughs> right. Are you even modifying? And here we have the AT4, because you know Denali is overrated. All right, how we doing? Solenoids mounted up. Perfect. Horns are mounted up. Perfect. Two more bits gone. Really? Yeah. Gotta get you some snap-on ones, boy. I need some snap-on. Nice. So basically, the way I did it was I got Vi Air's onboard air system. So that way I have the ability to fill up my tires for Daytona when I need to air it down for, you know, off roading. Or make money for kids with squatted trucks with Cadillac Escalade <laughs> rims who need fill ups. That's true. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. So we're already preparing ourselves for that. And I bought the Horn Blasters. The, uh, the, with the XL kit, Shocker XL, with all the accessories for about three fifty. So, if I did the math correct, and I'm Asian, so I can do my math pretty good, I came out on top. It was a better deal buying the Vi Air on board and then buying the horn separately. But not for the installer. We had to figure out some. Yeah, not for the installer, but we had to figure out some math on how to. That's do the true. And stuff. That'll work. I did all the math. I'm just kidding, he did all the math. He's still doing all the math. So you gotta figure out where to mount your um, quick connect. Quick connect? I don't know, because I'll probably never even use it. Right here. Right here? All right, let's do it. You sure? Yeah. Can well, you get to on. it? Oh, yeah. Easy? Yeah. Sure, I mean, if, even if we did it like right here, I don't, I don't care. I'd say right there would look really good. Okay, I mean, if you can get to it, easy. Ejecto Cito Cut, come here. Yeah. We gotta show you the proper switch. See, I don't have a big Ejecto Cito button. Yeah. That's the rock light button. 
Yeah. That's I think we should upgrade. I think we should do an upgrade. Yeah, 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 for sure. And then put a switch like right here or like right there maybe. Or right there. Okay. And then maybe the double row JW. Ooh, quad row. Oh, quad row. Quad row. Come on now. My bad. Double rows are standard that we don't even sell. <laughs> it's because we do quad row only. Quad row. I'm going to have to get the quad row. Heck yeah. Honestly, use self tapping screws if you need to. Yeah, we can't go down through there. And then Ooh, if the tank can just fit right under that retracts, that would be it will. gold. That'll be money. Because the leader hose goes in right here. All right. Oh, dude, that's perfect. Let me look underneath. Yeah, that right there would just be perfect. And I just gotta clean the bed a little bit. Okay. The hole needs to be a little bit bigger. Well, actually, no, we're good. Yeah, two would be fine. Just wanna make sure these are lining up good. You should have two bolts over here. Already. You want me to go underneath and put the nuts on it? No, I'm gonna have to bolt it down last. Okay. Cause it's so tight back here, all the wiring and stuff. All right, we're gonna go with those two right here up front. All right. There's gonna be plenty, and I might be able to get one on the back side. Let me see. So right. we're just gonna leave that light there for now so I can figure out we gotta drill the hole for the airline. All right, a lot has happened since I went to go eat. Can you give us a quick little recap? Got shit done. <laughs> um, you went to eat. <laughs> so before you left, we had all the mechanical stuff pretty much done. The tank mounted up, compressor, horns, onboard air, and so all the electrical had to be done. So what I had to do was get a trigger from your ignition fuse, run it to a relay, which then sends power to the compressor or to the pressure switch. The pressure switch will tell the compressor if it needs to cut on or stay off, depending on the pressure in the tank it's reading. And so that'll be to fill the compressor, I mean to fill the tank whenever it needs to be. And then now to activate the train horn, what we're gonna do for this truck is, instead of having like a secondary push button switch in the cab, you're gonna be able to use your factory horn, like the center horn. Mm -hmm. And I unplug the factory horn and I'm gonna tap into that circuit and send power back to the solenoid. So whenever you press your airbag, your center airbag, it'll cause the train horn to go off. Sweet. So you took out my horn already, right? I just took it off, took it out. Where'd I put it? To see which lead was positive, which lead was negative. Sweet. I'm not gonna tap into this. I'm gonna tap into the factory. We got the train horns installed, and I'm following the train tracks because we're trying to get some port, uh, pretty cool content for you guys. <laughs>
We're about to do a little photo shoot since we are at the train tracks. Alex got the 14 wides and the way his train horns are set up, you can see it really well from under the truck. Damn, that, that looks sick. I'm gonna see if I can explain everything. I'm losing my voice, so I might get Alex to do some of the explaining. Here we have the onboard set up right here. I gotta climb in there and get my hose. Gotta get my hose. Gotta get my hose. Here we have the two and a half gallon tank set up right there with the compressor. It this is Viair's onboard air system. I think it retails for about. I want to say it's less than $400 and it's completely worth it because once you have the onboard air system, it'll supply air to your train horns. And also what we're planning on doing is we plan on helping people out at Daytona in case they need to air down or if they get a flat, we can put air in their tire. Which that has happened to me. It has. Yeah, it has that's right. Happened. And it worked. I made 20 bucks. That's right. So if you don't mind, can you show us how this onboard air system works? Get your hose, your quick connect, put the truck back, plug it in, get your gun, quick connect, pull it back, plug it in. Perfect. So that could be for bicycles, tires, what I think it's set up to 37s. 37s, right? Yeah, so it can air up to about 37s. And then what I, like I was gun. You like that gun? Does yours this come with it? The fire has the gauge on it, so when you're pumping it up, you actually see where your pressure is. Oh shoot, nice. So say if I'm just holding it. This guy kind of got it stuck at 70. Mm -hmm. And then it actually locks on to the air truck on the tire. Exactly. I have the basic one where you just push it on. Mm -hmm. You gotta take it off and get another reader and push it on. So oh, it from Viair or uh, just, just regular? Stuff. And uh, I, like this. I mean, cool thing is like I do play soccer, so we have like 20 soccer balls that we need to pump up. You have attachments, like the little spike you mm -hmm. can put on it. Exactly. So, highly recommend it. Alex has got his onboard air system set up too, so Very we'll show y'all. Is that a Viair tank? Uh, Firestone. Firestone. I didn't go with Hornblaster's tank because it's, they're both five gallon, but I needed a long skinny one to fit underneath that toolbox. Yeah. So I did a Firestone five gallon and dual Viair compressors. See, that looks good. I may end up doing another, uh, what is it called? The tank, tank on the other side, like a two and a half gallon That's tank. What I had originally. I had two, two and a half. Oh, gallons. you had two of them. That's right. I had them linked together, but then I changed the bed, whole bed setup. I had the five gallon with a single compressor I just sold to Ron, mm -hmm. and I wanted to go with two black compressors instead of chrome. Just because? Because black compressors matter. But the, see, like the hose I got, it's not a coiled hose, it's a ah. big, big one. And then like you got all your attachments, your little blow gun. Hey, this matches my powder coat. Oh look, we're ready for Daytona already. I went out and bought that. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> I need to go to, Harbor Freight has these for sale too. So you got all the fittings, like the little, just the standard blow gun and the, mm -hmm. the fill up valve and then you have to check it separately. So I might, might be getting a gun like yours that That's has right. a digital the digital gauge on it. I definitely need to get me one of them swing cases because right now, as you guys saw, it's literally just bouncing around and it would have been nice to just be able to reach in right here or probably like right there, swing the case out. I would do and this because uh, you have the, the, the arm on that The side. arm that I probably like used once and that's just to show people how it works. All right, so on these 2020 GMCs, Chevys, I want to say probably with the newer models, there is something that we both learned is usually to get the compressor to kick in, the instruction says tap into the ignition. Right. So when you cut your key on or mm -hmm. push the button, it sends power to the source. So if it needs air, it'll start the compressor. Exactly. So that's what I did. <laughs> we tapped into the ignition fuse under the hood. And then when I got home, I turned the truck off 
and everything shut off like I it, like the truck was off and I opened the door to get out and my truck was still running and I called Alex I was like hey man what do we tap into because the truck won't shut off and I don't know if that has anything to do with it so it turns out I guess having that wire disrupts the ignition fuse so I talked to Matt and what he did and what he suggested was open the passenger side and then there's a fuse panel right here that I didn't even know about and all you have to do is get a female connector and then tap into a little slot that's right here and then your compressor will work so a huge shout out to Matt for doing that and I think that's why he needs to do a YouTube channel all right, so now for a quick comparison we both have the shocker kit and the main difference is Alex has six horns I have four however the way I have mine mounted it's completely under the truck and it faces forward and it completely like bounces off all around the truck on the ground so it appears louder whereas Alex Alex has six horns but all of it kind of dumps out behind him so his truck his horn should be louder but theoretically theoretically but we're here to find out if it actually is mine's running at 200 psi yours is at 150. Uh, so 50 more pounds of pressure see if the pressure makes any difference but according to stan it shouldn't well it shouldn't he said the it sweet works. spot for the horns is like one 140 to 160. is that what he said i think so so mine's at like the exact sweet spot then so horn blasters all their kits that I know of come with a pressure switch that goes from 110 to 150. Mm -hmm. So they offer the pressure switch that goes 140 to 200. Maybe that's for the Katrina horns. Yeah. That's the one I got. So yours is at 200. It's at 185. 185? Right All right, so 185 and like 150. So let's go ahead and hear the difference. You wanna go first? All right, that was loud as crap. That's equal. Is it? That is this equal. They're about equal? Overall, but that one might be a little more blistering because it's right in the Yeah, exactly. Ear, but overall loudness, I think it's the same. So two horns and extra 50 pounds makes a difference, but not like a huge, huge difference, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just the way we have my mounted. mounted too. Right? So let leave a comment below. Let us know what you guys think. Is Alex's louder? Is mine louder? Or are they about the same? We would like to know what you guys think, especially through the the audio clip from the camera. I will say the horn blasters, so it's the same horn. So his four are the same as four of the ones on there, but horn number two and three, I just have an extra one. So it's, that's all it is. It's, it's one more horn of number two and of number three for the extra volume. That's what right. they say on the website. So that's the XL, and what's yours, XL? S6. S6? So that's S4, S6. Oh, S4 and S6. Makes sense. So if you guys want to know, I think I paid with all the... F so when I did the Vire onboard air system to make the horns work, we had to purchase extra fittings and other components like wire. We needed to get wires? No. No, all the wiring would be the same. It's just fittings to route because the Vire tank only had five holes, whereas mine has eight. All right. So there's more availability on a bigger tank, but... You just had to route it differently and figure out how to branch it off in certain okay, spots. Exactly. If you buy the onboard air system from Vire and if you want to do the train horns, you do have to buy a couple of fittings to make it work. But overall, it's not too expensive because the onboard air system is less than 400 and I paid with fitting and everything less than 380 for the train horns. So not too bad, in my opinion. Got over 1200 in mind. Yeah, exactly. But yours looks cleaner, got bigger air tank and more horns plus I've, I've gone from i went from the regular kit that had the two and a half gallon single compressor same thing you got yeah and then i bought another tank another com, another another tank then more horns yeah and then another tank two compressors so i've changed it up a lot jesus too. yeah but because everyone can see his horns every time we drive like go on a road trip or something you see people doing the little honk sign and uh it's it's pretty cool but with my truck you really can't stealthy. see it at all yeah it's still you need to scare somebody with it exactly and then I might be able to get away with the uh, cops because they, they can't see my horns. I'll tell them that's my dump exhaust. Dump exhaust. After driving around downtown, we made it to our secret 
photo location. Okay, it's not a secret, but it's like where everybody comes and takes pictures. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Maybe next week we can take your boat out here. Maybe not out here, but to the lake. Oh, I love taking it to the river. Oh, you like taking it out here? Yeah. It's so smooth, but the water's so cold though. Uh, so that's up to you. Well, what will we do out here? Fish or just? Wakeboard. Wake People wakeboard out here? Oh, so how smooth this water is, it's perfect for wakeboarding. Oh shoot, I need The lake's always so choppy and rough, but yeah. the river's like perfect. Oh. That's why they do like ski competitions and stuff. Well, next week's supposed to be hot as crap, so I'm down. Um, yeah. All right, so it looks like it will be back here next week, and Alex is, will have a boat hooked up to the back of his tow pig. It's gonna be funny because like I'm gonna be the one with the 2500, but he's gonna be towing the boat. He's gonna be screaming going over the hills. I don't know. You got that new tune, so. That's true. It's running smoother. Yep.